I can't do it when people are watching me. Uh, I can go away if you like. <laughs> I don't even want to know I'm standing Why don't you come in? <laughs> What's happening team? We are at Gem Clean and this is a body shop and we've got a very special car in here. It's called a BAC Mono. That's it, BAC Mono. BAC Mono. I'm guessing that's because it's a one piece yep. made of carbon fiber. It's a very sexy car. Uh, cool. Very low slung to the ground. Um, we've got this fairly limited space inside. So we're gonna see what we can come up with, a few sort of lighting scenarios. Um, we're waiting for the sun to go down because we've got sun blasting through the windows at the minute. So let's get inside though. It's fripping freezing out <laughs> yeah. here. Come on. Right, so we're going to attempt what's called a hard box. And a hard box is basically the opposite of a soft box. So you've got your standard, what, five or six inch reflector. And what we do is we line it with black material inside. And what this does is that it reduces the size of the light source because we're gonna be using a bare bulb flash inside it. Because if we didn't have the black inside, the light source is actually this big. When we put the black inside, the light doesn't bounce off the inside of the reflector. And actually what we end up with is a very, very small light source. And what this is gonna do is create really long shadows on the floor. It's pretty rudimentary, but you know, it works. Profoto make hard boxes and they're about 800 pounds. And I've just modified my reflector for a quid. You see this in fashion photography quite a bit. That's our hard box. Right, so for setup one, we're going for a front three quarter shot, so camera's off the front of the car that side. Um, but it's quite a low angle, so we've had to put a trusty rotor light here in a box in order to get it low enough to be at frame. But the idea is we're going to use this to backlight some mist that we're going to put in using trusty atmosphere in a can to create some haze behind the car. And then we're actually going to light the car either by light painting it um, in the usual way or potentially using a strobe. And we're going to try a few different options. Right, what we did, we did have the light off to the right and high. We did, it didn't work. And it, it didn't crap. quite work. It, the way that it cast the, the light, the shadow, uh, it didn't quite work and it also didn't quite balance out the frame. Mm. So we've, we've tested it and it looks much better coming from the rear. The foreground here where we've got this shadow that effectively cuts right into the corner, yeah. thanks to a nice placement on the light. Yeah. We can use that as the base image for this shot mm. and then build the other bits yeah. as we go. Absolutely. But it's still too bright. Still a bit too bright. Uh, so I think the only thing we can do now is just eat more brownie. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm just gonna switch off this light um, and then we'll take an exposure. <sighs> well, it doesn't matter, as soon as I, you, you see the light come on. Let's move on to light painting, which I know you love. <laughs> I really, really do. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> nice dainty little walk there. <laughs> Trying to keep my <laughs> movement smooth. Here's the light painting image composited in with the hard box shot with those crisp long shadows gives me this final image with blacked out background. And because my least favorite color is purple, I created a desaturated version too, which I personally prefer. I've just taken a, a frame with the lights of the car on. Having a light, um, a, a, a frame that you can use that's got the lights on, mm. means if, you want, if, the, if it looks good, great. If not, you don't have to use it. Yeah. But it's better to have it and not mm. need it. Sure. Right, so we've got the rotor light in the back now. Lighting up the back of the car like a brake light. Maybe. I want to see if the aerosol yeah. creates smoke in the background. Okay. So that's what I'm going for. What about having smoke underneath the car? We could have that. We could do both. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, that's good. And then 
And then, if, yeah, spray, yeah, yeah. Here's Oliver's composite with the red backlit smoke image, and of course those headlamps which look awesome with the smoke passing over them. So yeah, need five seconds again. Obviously I'm not gonna have that light. So, got a head-on shot here, and uh, you probably can't see me at all, can you? So yeah, it's fine. Yeah, um, and we're doing the same thing as we did before. So, dark frame, shadow frame, light painting the car, and then light uh, using some atmosphere in the background. And this is those shots. So we've got some different light painting options for the car, and then got a few different options for the background. So this is our third composition with the mono just poking out of the garage there. Oliver's doing a couple of passes over the car with the light wand in different colors so we have a choice in post-production. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. These are all five second long exposures with an aperture of f8. So once we've got those in the bag, we're gonna throw some smoke into the equation. And of course, we've got that roto light lighting up the rear of the car. This is going to look pretty sci-fi, kind of like an alien being born. Yeah. So you get some in the background. Come towards the, the other side of the frame, the left. This is Oliver's choice of edits with red smoke and laser blue headlamps. And this is my edit with more natural colors and that sci-fi vibe. Both edits work pretty well. So what we're doing here, mate? So for this one, we're gonna do intentionally shooting so that we can composite in a different background. Yeah. So we've gone for a rear three quarter shot of the car as if it's poking out of a pit lane garage. Mm. And then we're going to put some kind of uh, background in either a racetrack at night or a yeah. cityscape, something like that. Yeah, I'm thinking so, like a Shanghai F1 track type of thing. Yeah. Or a, maybe a cityscape or something. Yeah, either could work. And so F stop for this, we need to be fairly high. Yes. Yeah. We're going for F8 so that the whole car's in focus because yeah. you need a clean edge to cut it out. Yeah. And even if you were shooting at F8, your background is going to be slightly blurred yeah. if it's a decent distance away from the car. Yeah. So we have three images open in Lightroom and this was the base image. We used the light one which is in the frame as you can see just up here. It was a 10 second exposure F8 and ISO 100 and this creates the base layer for our composite. The second image was taken with a light one from outside and that's, this is me in the background and as you can see it's a 13 second exposure still F8 and F8 gives us that really crisp line along the outline of the car and it creates this nice sort of shadow of light on the wheel and we get a bit more detail on the side of the car and we get some nice darker shadows at the back of the car compared to the original image and so the third image we took for this nice clean garage door at the top because the light one was in the original uh, base image so we needed a, a clean image for the garage door so if we take those over to Photoshop you can see that all of my work here all of the layers that I've created uh, for this composite so I'll just work through them and I'll just show you my workflow so this was the base image and then I composited in the nice clean garage door to get rid of the light wand and the third layer was the image I was holding the light wand and creating that nice shadow on the floor and the detail in the 
the side of the car and the shadows at the back of the car as well. Let's just turn that off and on again. And that just brings the eye onto the car and not the floor. Um, the next layer I did was to darken down the top of the image and create a nice shadow along the wall here and just get rid of some of those sort of yellows on the floor. So that was my next process. And then I took the pen tool and cut out the window of the garage door and created a path along the edge of the car and composited in this image. And this image I found on unsplash.com by a photographer called Nick Shulehin. I believe is the photographer's name. And I liked this image because of the, the colors in the background match the colors of the car. And the sort of the angle of the road kind of ties in with the angle that we shot the car at. Um, I also created a Gaussian blur. So if I just turn the, off the Gaussian blur, we can see that this image is nice and crisp and clean, but it kind of doesn't really work if you don't have that sort of separation of the car from the background. So I just added a slight Gaussian blur just to pull focus to the car, but still keeping detail in the background. And of course, we've got this obvious line here. So I used a desaturation layer and just sort of tied in with some dodge and burn just to make the image blend in with the background. And also the light that's on the floor needs a light source, you know, so I thought I'd add a street lamp just over the top here, just to marry in, just to tie in with the light that's on the floor. And then I sorted out this mess at the top here and just got rid of that. And some dodge and burn work just to add some focus to the wheels. I just sort of turn that off and on. You can see, you know, here the Pirelli sign comes to life. And then I just stamped down the layers and then just lightened this section of the road. And that was my final composite. 